And a five, four, three, two. Mary Violet Leontine Price was born February 10th in 1927 in Laurel, Mississippi. Her father, James Anthony Price, was a carpenter. Her mother, Kate Baker Price, was a midwife and, incidentally, also a singer. Price also had a younger brother, George B. Price, who became a brigadier general in the U.S. Army. The Price children were raised during the Great Depression in a segregated South. Though finances were tight, Price often said that she never felt poor because of the tremendous love in the home. She received a toy piano when she was three and began studying formally at the age of five. She eventually played so well that she even sometimes accompanied her high school and church choirs, while of course singing solos too. When Price was nine years old, her mother took her to hear the great Marian Anderson perform in Jackson, Mississippi. She later said that she knew immediately after seeing Anderson that performing was what she wanted to do but she did not catch the opera bug until much later. In 1944, Price enrolled at the College of Education and Industrial Arts, later Central State College in Wilberforce, Ohio, to study music education. But when the president of the college and the head of the music department heard her sing, they personally encouraged Price to pursue performance. She eventually applied and was accepted to the Juilliard School, where she enrolled in 1949 for vocal studies. Only then, at the age of 22, was she formally introduced to opera. While at Juilliard, Price studied with Florence Ward Kimball, with whom she worked with until Kimball's death in 1977. In her final year at Juilliard, she performed the role of Alice Ford in Falstaff by Verdi. Composer Virgil Thompson was in the audience and was so impressed by the young singer that he immediately invited her to sing the lead role in the Broadway revival of his opera, Four Saints in Three Acts. Though the revival only ran three weeks, it was enough for George Gershwin to hear her and offer her the role of Bess in a revival of Porgy and Bess in Dallas, Texas. When the production began its international touring leg, Price accepted the offer to perform with them across Europe and Russia for the next two years. Porgy and Bess helped to launch Price's career, and soon after leaving the production, she was invited to make her television debut with NBC in 1955 as Floria Tosca in Puccini's Tosca. The move was a significant one for the studio, who recognized the importance of hiring Black talent on television, as it was a new entertainment medium at the time. They hired her again in 1956, 1957, and 1960. But sadly, not everyone was as open to progress. Many Southern states refused to air the production because of Price's presence, including her home state of Mississippi. Because racism. Price's career coincided seamlessly with the civil rights movement. In 1961, she made her debut with the Metropolitan Opera in Il Trovatore with Franco Corelli. But performance was so electric that the audience gave a record-setting 42 minute standing ovation. The house has never again seen an ovation that long. became the Met's leading lady over the course of the next several decades, singing 204 performances with the company. The soprano performed almost nonstop for the next decade, but by 1970, she decided to reduce her operatic schedule in favor of recitals and concerts. She retired from the Met stage in 1985, singing the role that she favored above all, Aida, in Giuseppe Verdi's opera, Aida. Price continued to give regular concert and recital performances into the 90s, but by the end of the decade, she had all but retired. However, even in retirement, she has been known to give age-defying performances. For example, in 2001, at the age of 74, she sang an a cappella rendition of God Bless America for a benefit concert in honor of September 11th victims at Carnegie Hall. And she ended that rendition in a beautifully floated high B flat. She says of being an artist, 
You are never dead. You are never forgotten. It is a contribution that is ever present. It has no century. It has no era. It has no time. It just has a very poignant and everlasting significance. Today, Leontine Price is still kicking. She lives in Columbia, Maryland with her younger brother and his family and has received many awards and honors, among which include the Presidential Medal of Freedom, the Kennedy Center Honors, National Medal of Arts, French Order of Arts and Letters, the Italian Order of Merit, and an honorary doctorate from the Boston Conservatory at Berkeley. She has additionally won 19 Grammys, three Emmys, and the National Association of Black Broadcasters Award. She is also an avid gardener, has authored a children's book, and remains still one of the greatest voices who ever lived. <laughs>